Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of part of what uh, Peter Webster did. He did the whole broad thing. I'm going to talk about just this monthly um, forecasts that are being generated by um, uh, the European Center. Frederick Vittard, of course, is uh, uh, my source of these. And I really think it's one of the opportunities for extending um, into the intraseasonal time scale, which I'm going to talk about as being 10 to 30 days as, as a, a new um, advantage for uh, the operational forecasters. Uh, I could give you some Navy examples, but uh, okay. Um, so, uh, I'm going to, I have way too many slides, uh, but not as many as Peter. Um, <laughs> I want to evaluate in a particular period in June of uh, 2008 to December of 2008. We had a big field experiment in the Western North Pacific. The European Center provided these 32-day um, experimental forecasts to us, and we were seeing them once a week. We're looking at just the tracks and saying, wow, there's something here, especially when it was very few storms in August and we were getting very nervous. And then in uh, September, we got more storms than we could handle, actually. So the hypothesis here is that if tropical cyclone formation is predominantly um, determined by the large-scale environmental fields, and that these fields, uh, there was a question earlier about the degree that the MJO can be forecast by these models. But uh, Frederick Vittard has shown a relationship between the European Center forecasts and the activity uh, modulated on, uh, on monsoon, on Mad Mad Julian oscillation. So if it can predict formation because it got the environmental field right, and for the very strongest storms, that environmental field was favorable over large areas, then the track <coughs> is going to be predicted as well because the first order effect in tropical cyclone motion is the environmental uh, steering. So that is the, the basis for this. Uh, we use the uh, Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Uh, in 2008, there were differences in numbers and uh, so forth rel relative to the official center. Uh, definition of forecasting uh, formation is 25 knots according to JTWC, um, not the RSMC Tokyo. Uh, so again, as Peter said, 32-day forecast once a week on Thursdays, uh, 50 members plus the control, 60-kilometer uh, resolution to day 10, and then 80-kilometer resolution, and this uh, usual thing in there. Um, ensemble run. In other words, the kind of things that Peter talked about first, where they run to 15 days on Thursdays, they just keep on going uh, to 32 days. So that's what we're using. Same thing which Peter talked about is what is the tracking uh, routine. Um, one thing that we're doing, maybe a little different, uh, we're looking at the various uh, vortices that are predicted by the 51 members. We're, we're grouping them together to make ensemble storms. And we do that. Um, the other thing that we do maybe is a little different is that we do weighted mean vector motion. Okay, So that what the weighted thing is simply that if you have these three vectors uh, in this 12-hour period, we look at their origin point relative to the, uh, the mean uh, or the position from the last 12 hours, and the closer it is to the, um, uh, that value, the greater the weight it is. So that, that's all our weighted mean vector thing is. So uh, new vortices can join at any time, and we have um, a, an allowable separation distance, uh, which increases linearly from 180 nautical miles during uh, day one to 420 nautical miles at day 14, and then it's constant. So we're continually adding, as, as vortices there um, occur in the same region from different members of the ensemble. Um, we also merge these ensemble storms. 
what happens is, for example, in uh, the case I'm going to talk about, Zheng Mi, uh, some of the members started over here next to the Philippines, some of them started over here, but it was quite clear after a few days that these are in fact the same uh, storm. So we don't get the formation position exactly correct, it's just within this area. But then the environmental steering takes over and then you get these various tracks. And so this agrees quite well with Jiang Mi, uh, which struck uh, Taiwan. Okay, so we have mergers and then we go back to see by going backwards with weighted motion vectors this is when the origin of the combined or merged storm. So we looked at this. Um, one of the things that, in the European Center thing, uh, we looked at it and we see that European Center, the minimum they ever had was 14 in a 32-day period, and the maximum they had was 44 ensemble storms in a 32-day period. By contrast, uh, in JTWC in the 25th of December uh, forecast for 32 days had no storms. Uh, their minimum was zero. Uh, so in general, the European Center um, technique has too many storms, even after we've done this. And 76% uh, of them have less than five members in the vortices. So we don't believe every vortex track, OK? And the ensemble storm uh, takes care of that. Uh, I'm not going to go through this. Um, it's just some correlations. Uh, you can't simply say I'm, I'm going to take um, less than five or more than 19 and, and so forth. Uh, the major point I want to make is the European Center storms start on average two and a half days before the JTWC even says that there's something there. And in some cases, even well, it looks like maybe 10 or 11, 11 or 12 days. So these are the JTWC storm numbers that we're look, matching. Um, so it's starting two and a half days before JT says it's in their best track. And that best track may be only 15 knots. So it, this vortex tracking thing in the ensemble is picking up things earlier than JTWC. That's one of the things that we have to work on if we're going to make this thing operational, deciding what's the early stage, where, how much of it do we believe. So our verification is to go against JTWC storm tracks. And we use the same separation distance. In other words, it's only a match in the early times if it's very close to the JTWC track. Later on, after 14 days, it can be as many as 420 kilometers away, and we would still say that's a match. But we don't allow any time deviation. It has to match at that distance at exactly that time. Whereas if you look at the statistical techniques for tropical cyclone formation, they may allow three, four, five-day slop and uh, you know deviation on that. So we are being very time uh, conscious of this. So if there's at least one 12-hour position that matched the storm, then we look at the quality of the storm track as forecast versus what the JTWC track looked like. And so we have these five categories subjectively assigned. So you'll see things like excellent, above average, and good, and so forth. Um, what I'm going to try and convince you is that at least for the strongest storms, during 2008, in the peak of the season, that there's predictability out to four weeks. That's what I'm going to try and convince you. So what we do in the initial one, it's like that Jiang Mi case, and I'll show you Sinlaku. Sinlaku was our you know, poster child storm for 2008. We, we tracked it from, from beginning to uh, extratropical transition. Uh, it's excellent. All 51 members. The code here is uh, the first number is that's the ensemble storm number. This was an existing storm, so it's number one. It has all 51 members, and the track was excellent. Okay, we're not interested in this time period. We already know that's good. Um, week one, we had um, you know storm four was only good. It had 23 members, but it was only good, and the zero here means it was only good early. And one of the things we found out is 
Sometimes the storms are matching well in the, the, uh, in the early stages, but on general, the ensemble storms are moving too slowly, and so it, it loses its match. And then sometimes it, it picks it up at the end again. So week one wasn't so good, but week two here, and I'm going to show you the tracks in just a minute, of storm two, 20 members, storm four, 18 members, and storm 13, all in week two, in other words, 14 days before this one, we had uh, a match. And the fact if these are red means that subjectively, I, I'm saying that they're providing the same information to the forecaster. Whoops, maybe back up. No, okay, I'm good. So this is week two, ensemble storm two. You can say, well, gee, we had storms that went to the west, but we also had storms that went right over the verifying position, which was northern uh, Taiwan, that little island there. Um, that's uh, with 20 members. This one was storm four with 18 members. And this is ensemble storm. Um, need to get rid of that over there. Um, that was ensemble uh, storm 13 with seven members. So you add those up, 20 plus 18 plus seven. We had 41 members out of the 51 possible that say there's going to be a storm sometime in week two that's going to move into the region of northern Philippines or southern Taiwan. And it verified in northern Taiwan. So that's week two. Uh, then I'm going to jump to week four. We had uh, storm, uh, Ensemble Storm 21, 10 members, and Ensemble Storm 30 with six members. So 16 out of the 41, uh, out of the 51, so maybe 30% chance that you're going to get a storm in that location four weeks in advance. So we've done other cases. Uh, Hagaput, how am I doing on time? Okay, uh, Hagaput was, uh, I'm showing this because we did find in week two, week three, and week four some indication of these, but our trouble was in this case is that the timing of the storm was wrong. The, the tracks were good, but the timing is wrong, and that's going to be one of the things that we're going to have to consider as we try to make this into an operational product as to what is how, how to combine things that are similar tracks but in different times. So this is the Hagaput case. Uh, so this is not an easy forecast to get a, a southward, uh, south of west movement and then the kind of scatter where it could go this way or could go that way. Uh, but the verification was uh, a little north of the actual track. Um, so we have ensemble storm um, B, uh, 13 with 12 members doing that um, here. And so the track looks good, but what I, can, what I don't show you there is the timing is off, timing of those tracks. Um, we have a Nuri case, um, another one that we studied. Uh, this looks bad. I'm showing you one bad case because even at week one it didn't look good. We had uh, 14 and, and uh, 6 here and 12 and uh, 4 there uh, out week 2 and week 3. But what we've looked at this one and um, what was mentioned earlier about the pouch and uh, in, the, in the wave and so forth, uh, the European Center was following the pouch in the northern wave and the storm developed to the south of Guam uh, in radar range and in aircraft range. And so Sorry, uh, my colleague Mike Montgomery, uh, the pouch, the storm didn't get in the pouch, but it still formed. Okay, um, there are cases when it doesn't work, and we had looked at deterministic models during the storm, and we found that uh, the deter deterministic models, even to five days, don't always work in this case, but... Um, so Bear Clinic cases where I thought maybe the ensemble would work best because ensembles in general are, are, uh, are, are produced to do best in the, in the mid-latitudes. And I'm not going to go through this, but none, 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 none. Obviously, it didn't work. Um, so here's my conclusions. 
I think we have a viable technique uh, to match these uh, ensemble members, uh, where we make uh, we look at these vortices and we form storm tracks. So we're not looking at just the formation, but also the track. And it generates too many of them. Uh, there's a lot of orphan storms, uh, less than five members. Uh, but in most cases, it starts too early, which we can actually use to our advantage. Um, uh, you know, many times, it's only 15 to 25 knots. So we think there is some evidence of predictability out to maybe four weeks um, based on this one season, 2008, um, but not for cyclones that form out of bear clinic systems, which is a disappointment to me. Um, so we're testing it. You know, we're going to have to calibrate this because we have too many vortices. Um, so what we're doing uh, for 2009, we've, we're looking now at the 2009. We have those weekly forecasts. We're doing that calibration and, uh, to de develop a probabilistic uh, forecast technique. Um, they have increased the horizontal resolution, and we're hoping that they'll go to twice a week. I don't know, Peter, if you have any idea about that. Um, but we are going to now get in real time these 32-day forecasts for our experiment this summer that uh, Sui Chen mentioned, ITOP and uh, what we call TCS-10. Uh, so we're going to get those, so ITOP. I had the wrong name here, right, Sui, uh, of ITOP, but at any rate, just know it as ITOP. So we, we're going to uh, think here in 2010, we hope to show uh, more evidence that there's some predictability for some storms in the western North Pacific out to four weeks. Thank you. Thank you.